Van Gogh McGann is a writer and broadcaster, best known for his travel books and TV series. Today, Van Gogh is staying closer to home. He's walking two routes in County Sligo. I've always loved Sligo, and I don't know why. Maybe it's because Yeats captured the fact that the myth is still alive in this area. Like when I was a kid, I remember hearing about you know Finn McCool uh, finding his son Ushin on the side of Ben Bulban. It seems like this land. It still has some of that old enchantment, still has a sense of that, that myth that was alive in every rock, like in every tree long ago. And so I want to go and explore Ben Bulban better, walk around it, get a sense of it, and see, can I learn more about that? Mancorn is walking through the Ben Bulban Forest Trail on a track called the Red Loop. It takes him alongside Ben Bulban Mountain. In total, it's about three and a half kilometers and takes about 50 minutes. It's a typical blustery Irish day, but I have my bag, I've got like rain gear, I've got leggings, I've got an apple from my own apple tree. I have a, some sort of maya of cocoa bar. I have like good rain gear on, but the day is still blustery. So, I mean, it, the clouds could come down. I have a phone, I'll always know where I am. I've also told someone where I'm going today and when I'm due back. So I should be covered, I should be safe. The Ben Bulban Forest Walk is about 16k from Sligo Town and is located just outside the village of Grange. Known as Yates Country, this part of County Sligo is also the location for some of Ireland's best known folklore. This woodland is a good example of Ireland's natural biodiversity and is home to native trees, flora and fauna. Miriam Crowley has been a park ranger here for over 10 years. Miriam specializes in the flora, fauna, and wildlife on this walk. Hello, Chia. Hello. You looking at something or what? Uh, a family of thrushes went off there into the distance. I'm just monitoring this area. Yeah. All of the areas you can see down there, the Ox Mountains is a special area conservation, and the three Sligo Bays are special areas of conservation or special protection areas for birds. And this whole area is one as well? And this it? whole area is part of it as well. This is a woodland with native Irish species in it. And there's multi-layers yeah. in the woodland. You have a ground layer, and you've got all the different species growing So these the things ground. going up the trees. And then. then you've got the mid layer, halfway through the species that only grow a certain height. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the canopy layer up on top. And everything is interconnected. All the different layers. And it starts really in the soil, in fact. Like there's a whole communities of things going on in the soil. So yeah, for example, even have a look at these trees. Look at this one here now. It's gnarly old thing. Different, isn't it? The birch tree. Uh huh. And it's had a little bit of damage, which allows some other species to get in, some of the lichens to get in. It's covered with layers of this fuzzy isn't stuff. Isn't it See this fuzzy stuff? Yeah. This fuzzy lichen has. You have to have really good air quality. That stuff won't grow in <sighs> air pollution. They actually use it as air pollution monitoring in places. And look, in the honeysuckle, there's got a leaf miner in it. So that's a. That's a little insect that mines the leaves. Burrowing That's, its way it's actually through the leaves. It's all part of the interconnectedness of everything. Right. Everything is dependent on, the, on itself. So the, the honeysuckle is going to want to wind up the tree. It's going to wind up the tree. And then under the soil, there's a whole other world, is there again? A whole other world under the soil. There's microorganisms, apparently, that are they're actually really not that micro. They're massive, thick, huge things underneath the soil. So all and of this I need is, to be thinking of as I'm walking along, that there's it. layers upon layers going on here. I hope you get a chance along your walk to stop and do that from time to time. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Love coming across a really great example of a mushroom because it reminds me of that whole world that's going on underneath the soil that we're not aware of. So, like, the, a mushroom is just the fruiting body of a whole plant of roots, this whole network of micro roots that's spreading out throughout the whole woodland that is then feeding the trees. Like, the roots in the trees will get nutrients from this whole micro root network. 
And so it makes us think that like there's this whole world, this whole energy network going on underneath the ground that you don't take account of when I'm just walking above ground. And that then makes me think, you know when the ancients were saying that long ago they knew there was a world beneath the ground just like there is above it? Were they tapping into this whole thing? They were aware, you don't just look at what's in your eyes, you think about those other realms. And what I love about a walk like this is then you get time to stop and look at these sort of things and consider. You get to think about them. That's what's special. As Manicorn leaves the cover of the trees and heads uphill, Ben Bulban begins to reveal itself. This part of Sligo is on the wild Atlantic Way, and the weather here can be very changeable. But for Manchon, that change only adds mystery and atmosphere to the folklore. There's like a little black mark up there. There's a lintel and with a, with a portal or an arch over it. And local lore said that that was the entrance to the other world. So if the fairies or the good people wanted to come out of their realm into our real world, it was through entrances like this. I love the fact that lands like this are not just alive in terms of nature, but in terms of imagination, in terms of mythology too. Eileen Kilgallen is a retired school teacher and she knows the myths and legends that come from this part of Sligo. It's magical, yeah. it's majestic. It, the potency of it, like from below, it looks like a spirit, like a world of, of, from another place, doesn't it? It is from another place because the Fianna, the famous army of the Fianna, yeah. they lived on this mountain. This was their happy hunting ground and Fionn was always lucky when he hunted here. And you know, the final episode of the tragic love story of Dermot and Grania actually finished on this mountain too. On Ben Bulban. So on Dermot and Grania, this great love story. Finn McCool goes all around the island chasing a young one. Grania, yeah. she was daughter of the High King, engaged to Finn. However, Dermot yeah. captured her heart right. and they moved around. Finally, Finn got him because on this mountain one night, yeah. Dearmouth came here. To Ben Bulban. To Ben Bulban. There yeah. was a wild boar on Ben Bulban. Okay. And that wild boar threw Dearmouth to the ground, pierced Dearmouth with his horn. And he lay mortally wounded. And that's when Finn played his last trick because. So Dearmouth's dead up here or dying up on top of the hill? Dying. Right. And he says, But Finn, you know how to cure me. Bring water from a stream to me in your hands, in your magic hands, and I'll be cured. Yeah. He came the first time with the water, let it fall through his fingers. Came the second time with the water, tripped over a little stone. Huh. All the time, Jermud was dying, 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 was coming the third time, and he died. This is where Jermud died. Huh. That was the end of the famous love story right here on Ben Bulba. 
So do you feel a spiritual potency in places like this? You can feel it in the blackthorn trees, on the limestone, in the stream that comes down the mountain. The fairies are everywhere. They come out every night right out onto this mountain. There was this real sense that the fairies were among us, weren't they? They were beneath the soil in special areas like this. There were, and nobody will dare touch a fairy fort anywhere in Ireland yeah. because they have power. They're powerful people of another world. Uh, Eileen, you've given me a whole new prism through which to look at this landscape. I really appreciate it. Garamagat. Good, and don't let the puka get you as you go. I'm <laughs> off. Garamagat. See ya.